Hey everyone, hope all is well. My name is Jamie Fenn, and today I'm gonna show you how to bring your 2D animations, images, and even videos to life in a 3D environment in DaVinci Resolve. And this is what it looks like, check it out. Now this idea is inspired by a super creative guy I just started following on Instagram. I don't know how to pronounce his Instagram tag, but I'll link it down below so you guys can check out his profile, but he has some really creative uploads. I'm going to show you the exact tools to create this effect, and then I'll leave the creative freedom up to you. And if you make anything and post it to Instagram, feel free to tag me and I'll come check it out and let you know what I think. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and hit that bell while you're at it. And if you find this video helpful or you enjoyed the effect, Hit that like button as well. That'd be awesome. All right, with that said, let's get started. All right, time to get artsy. So here I have a clip that I shot in 4K. And over here on the left here, I have a picture. Now, this is a great photo to use for this example because it's really basic. You can cut out the three main layers, which is the sky, the moon, and the wolf. And then you can add more layers in, and I'll show you how to do that. So let's go ahead and take this photo and make it the length of the clip underneath. I'm gonna highlight both of these by holding down Command and selecting them, right-clicking on them and selecting New Fusion Clip. Let's go into Fusion. Make sure the playhead is over this clip, by the way. Then click on Fusion. And the first thing we wanna do is just disconnect this Merge node from these two Median nodes. I'm going to click on Median 1, hold down Shift and press Spacebar and type in Camera Tracker. Scroll down and select Camera Tracker. Next, we want to come up here to the inspector and select preview auto track locations. Then we can turn up the detection threshold and turn down the minimum feature selection. Then the next thing we want to do is select bi-directional tracking. Then select auto track. Great. Now once that has completed tracking, let's move over to the second icon here. And you want to select your focal length. I know that I used a GH5 with an adapter and an 18 to 35. So I'm going to convert the math if you don't know what your focal length is. Google it real quick. And so that was my focal length. Next, I'm going to move on to the third tab here. And this is where we have to narrow down our tracking points to make sure that our objects in our 3D scene will look like they're actually in the scene and they don't drift around and it's very accurate. So the first thing I like to do is come down here to the solve weight and select that as zero and select set. Next, I like to turn this down a little bit, this maximum track error, and kind of just look at how many points I have. I have a total of 4,380 tracks down here. So I usually try to stick around 1,000 tracking points. I seem to get pretty far with that. I've even gotten really good tracks with about 400 points. You just have to have the correct kind of points. I could explain into further detail, but for now I'm just gonna move on through the tutorial. So now that I have these points selected down, I'm looking down here, I'm gonna get rid of about half of the tracking markers. And once you've selected a good amount of tracking points to get rid of, you can select delete. So now we can go through our scene and see what we have as far as tracking points. You can also get rid of some tracking points, like here I'm gonna select these, delete those. I'm gonna scroll throughout the scene, get more points that I really don't need because this is tracking the floor and I don't need those. And then also maybe turn up the minimum track length here to get rid of some points. And I wanna have a good amount of points like that, so I'm gonna click delete on those as well. Now that we have about 1500 tracking markers, I'm going to select solve. Okay, after our first solve, we have an average solve error of 2.8 pixels. You should try to get under one pixel. So the next step we can do here is turn down our maximum solve error. If you tried to adjust this parameter beforehand, it wouldn't have done anything because we haven't solved yet. So let's go ahead and turn this down and get rid of about 500 tracking points. And I'm gonna delete those. And now that we have a thousand tracks, I'm going to resolve. All right, great. Now you can see that I have a 0.6145 average solve error. So now I'm gonna move on to the fourth tab here. Now I'm going to select the 3D scene transform option. And what we wanna do is select some points and align our ground plane so the camera tracker lines up with what we want the ground to be. So I'm going to select this aligned option and select unaligned. And what we wanna do is we want to select our orientation, which is the ground plane. So I'm going to select just a few points here. I'm gonna select something like a square. I'm gonna select these, this, these, 
maybe even something up here. That paper is pretty flush with the table, so that point is okay. All right, now I'm going to set from selection. Now I want to set my origin point of where I want my media to come into the scene. You don't have to do this, but I tend to do it. So I'm just going to select one of these points, these three points here. The face is a good area that I'm going to put the actual media, which is that photo. I'm going to set from selection. Now that we've aligned our points, now we want to select aligned and then export this data. That will automatically drop a node tree here in your node window. And what we want to do now is get rid of this camera tracker. I'm going to put this over here because you can use this again in the future if you'd like. I'm going to disconnect that. I'm going to connect the camera tracker to the media out. And now if I drag this merge node into the viewer window, you can see we have all of our tracking points here like this. If you look closely here, you can see that the points of the sketchbook are all lined up with the ground plane. Let's go ahead and drag our median out back into the viewer window. Let's take our picture, which is our median two, and add a image plane. Because in order to put this into a 3D space, you have to put it into an image plane and then drag the image plane node into the Merge 3D. Okay, so now we have to separate this into layers. Put the playhead at the very beginning of the clip. Next, we want to drag this median into the viewer window. Then with this median node selected, select the polygon tool. That will make the image disappear. So come over here and select invert. Next, you want to mask out your layers. So for example, I'm just going to do a really quick masking here and mask out the mountain and the wolf that's standing on top of it. Now, if you do this, please make sure to do this as precisely as possible as you don't want any overlapping of the image. All right, so once you've done that, you want to come back over here and select invert. All right, so now we have the problem of having some white in between the legs. So in order to fix that, what we can do is select this polygon node, come up here and add another polygon node. Now, if you come in here and just select through the mask area that you want and then complete the mask, nothing will happen. But that's because you need to come over here to the paint mode, select merge, and then select subtract. Then repeat the process for every layer or hole that's maybe in your image or video and come over and just keep repeating that process of masking out those gaps. Next, what you want to do is copy and paste this node tree right next to it. Let's go ahead and drag in this median into the viewer window. And with our playhead at the very beginning still, we want to come to our first polygon node and we want to expose the rest of the sky here. So once you've done that, we want to connect our image plane to the Merge 3D. So once you've done that, now what we want to do is drag in our Merge 3D and it's time to separate these layers. So what I'm going to do is click on the image plane of our background, which is our moon and our stars, select the image plane, come up here to the inspector, select these arrows, and let's go ahead and move this back on the Z axis. And now you can see we're starting to get some layer separation. I'm going to do the double windows, select the median out and drag it into this viewer window. And now I can kind of see what's going on in both realms, both 3D worlds. So let's go ahead and just drag this down a little bit. So in my example, I actually masked out the moon. So I'm going to go to the very beginning of the video, bring my median into this viewer window here, select the polygon node. And instead of selecting a polygon node again to add to this tree, I'm going to select the ellipse. Now we want to do the same technique as we did for the layers in between the wolf's legs. Come over here and select subtract. And I'm going to basically just kind of bring these down and mask out the moon. It's just going to be like a very rough mask, but basically you get the idea like that. Make sure these numbers are exactly the same. So the next thing I did was I added in some clouds. So I'm just going to come up here to my media pool, drag those in here. Then I have to add an image plane to the clouds because I need to put it in 3D space, bring that into the merge node. So if I want to look at the median, I'm going to bring it in here. I'm going to use a delta here to mask out the blue. Now I have something that looks like that. And then next, I'm going to look at my 3D space and see where I want to put it. Now I can use the merge node here and look at it in 3D space, or I can just drag up the median out into this viewer window and move it in 3D space. So again, I'm going to come up here to the inspector, move it up and down, and maybe even rotate it. So I need to flip this up a little bit so it has a little bit more perspective. 
and maybe even bring it really close to the camera. So I can see here's the camera here. So if I want to bring it up really close to the camera, I can do something like this. So now I have some clouds in front of the wolf here. Now say I wanted to add more clouds. All I have to do is just copy and paste those cloud node tree layers or nodes, I guess I should say, and then attach that to the merge node. This is starting to get a little messy. So what we can do is actually right click, arrange tools to grid. Now, hopefully that will clean everything up once you start moving nodes around. And so now that I have two layers that are exactly the same, I need to move this one back maybe in 3D space. I can also bring up the scale, make it super big, and then move it back in 3D space. One thing to also keep in mind that's very important is that you want to make sure that you don't have any layers kind of intersecting with one another. You don't want to have anything like rotating into it another layer because then it starts to create weird artifacts and it looks all glitchy. So make sure you keep these layers separated. So I just dragged in a green screen shooting star here. I'm also going to want to add a delta keyer in between those. I'm going to look at this image plane and key out the green like that and then add the image plane to the merge node. So now when I look at the media out and then I look at my 3D environment here, I can see this is where my image plane is because I have it selected. So in this situation, I'm going to kind of just make sure this angle is at the same angle as these others. So I'm going to rotate this back to be just right in between the clouds and the wolf. So now you guys are probably wondering, how did you get the moon to be in the shot and have it look 3D? So let's come over here, select anywhere in the node area, select a shape 3D node. Let's add a merge 3D and then also a render 3D. All right. So now we have our shape here. Let's go ahead and drag it in to the viewer window. We have a plane. Let's select the sphere. Now we need to figure out a way to get an image around the sphere. So if you actually go to NASA's website, I'll put a link down in the description, but there is a bunch of pictures of planets and the moon and I downloaded the moon. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to go ahead and drag it in and just attach this to the shape 3d and voila, look at that. We got a moon. It's pretty sweet actually. All right. So the next thing we want to do is click on our shape 3d. And if you look closely, our moon is not exactly round. You can see there's like some geometric edges. And what we want to do is turn up the base subdivisions and also turn up the height subdivisions. And now it rounds out our moon and it looks all nice and smooth. So next we want to take our merge 3D and drag it down here to our merge 3D node here, which now we've just attached it to our 3D scene. Let's go ahead and drag our median out in here. And whoa, that's a big moon. So the next step we want to do is resize this. So let's go ahead and click on our merge node here that's attached to our moon. Come up here to the inspector and bring this back into 3D space like so. And also I'm going to scale this down to be much, much smaller. But I'm now looking at the side view. I'm going to move this back to about right there. Now I'm going to find our wolf layer, which was the first layer that we created. And I'm going to bring it closer to the camera. So let's go ahead and do that bring this up like so. So the wolf is somewhat in the moon area and the cloud layer here is kind of weird. So I'm going to come to our first cloud layer, which is this guy right here and just move him up. By the way, check out this playlist right here. It's awesome. But you can import anything, images, videos, hand-drawn animations, which you can do in Procreate. And if you post anything to Instagram, please tag me. I'd love to check it out and see what you guys are coming up with. And thanks for watching and I'll catch you in my next video.